uh, around the issues of, of saving ethnic studies. We're here to have a discussion, to engage you in a conversation about, in, in part, what's happening in Arizona. And you'll hear Agustin Nomero talk about that after the break, about three o'clock. But prior to that, we want to have a, we want you to talk about, we want to talk about what's been happening with ethnic studies here in Southern California. And, and to that end, we're going to have speakers who are coming to talk to you who actually experienced, took Chicano Studies classes, uh, took African American Studies classes, Asian American Studies classes, and Native American Studies classes. We want to engage you in a conversation about their experiences. But before I do that, I want to sort of welcome all of you again, but welcome some of the, or recommend, or recognize some of the co-sponsors of this, this convening today. Um, the Graduate School of Education Information Studies is one of our uh, co-sponsors. Uh, UC Accord is another one of our co-sponsors. Uh, the UCLA Academic Advancement Program is a co-sponsor. Uh, the Ralph Bunch Center for African American Studies is a co-sponsor. The American Indian Studies Center is a co-sponsor. The Center for Community College Partnerships. The Chicano Studies Research Center. The UCLA Graduate Student Association. And the Graduate Student Association in Education. The Association of Raza Educators. The Association of Mexican American Educators. Uh, Los Angeles Community Advocating for Unity, Social Justice and Action. And the Youth Justice Council. We want to thank you all for co-sponsoring this event. Uh, Augie asked me to do something. He asked me to sort of have a roll call of some of the high schools that are here. Uh, does someone want to, we, we know that Roosevelt is here, but is someone from Roosevelt here want to sort of raise your hand or? Where are the folks from Roosevelt? Okay. Are there any other high schools here or any other community organizations? What, what? All right. Any others? They're coming in? Okay, they're in the back. Okay, we'll, we'll get to them when they get here. Um, any other community organizations that are represented in the audience? Anyone? Okay. Um, we also like to do a couple of things, sort of housekeeping things. If you get a chance, we really would like you to uh, give your testimony or your testimony on how Chicano studies or Native American studies, Asian American studies, or American Indian studies, or women's studies has impacted your life. And to that end, we have a camera out in the back, and we'd like you to sort of just give us your, your, your reflections on, on, on ethnic studies. So please, if you do that for us, we'd really appreciate it. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to begin the program, because we have a, a, a full program for you. And we're going to ask the speakers to come up in, in the order that you see them on your program. Um, I'm going to start with, with Selena Rodriguez. Selena is the director, the director of the program director of the of the of the Pico Youth and Family Center here in, <laughs> here, here in West Los Angeles. Um, but Selena has an interesting story that I think she'll share with you. Selena was a high school student in Tucson Unified School District when the ethnic studies program was beginning, and Selena's teacher was Agustin Romero, who's sitting next to her. And Selena went on to the University of Arizona and graduated with a baccalaureate degree at the University of Arizona. She then came here to UCLA and got her master's degree last year in June uh, in the urban planning program here. And now she's, and now she's directing, uh, the program director for the uh, Pico Youth and Family Center. So I want to bring up uh, Selena Rodriguez. Hello everyone. First, I want to thank you all. Hello Alejandro. <laughs> I want to thank you all for um, being here first and foremost. My name is uh, Selena Rodriguez, native to Sonin, born and raised. Um, we're coming, me and my coworker Karen, who will speak later, we're coming down from the Pico Youth and Family Center, hustling over here, because this, this to me is um, one of the most important things in my life is saving this department in Tucson. If it wasn't for um, Agustin Romero um, in the department, I wouldn't be here speaking to you today. Uh, I graduated from Troy High School in 2003. Um, that high school was considered, quote unquote, one of the worst high schools in the state of Arizona. And I say worse, 
because in terms of test scores, uh, higher teacher over turnover rate, highest push out slash drop out rate, um, no teachers caring for us. It wasn't until my junior year walking into a class called Hispanic Studies. They didn't call it Chicano Studies, but Hispanic Studies. I walked in there and right away, posters up, music playing, handouts handed, and someone shaking my hand one by one and us sitting in a circle. I have that memory every time I walk into a classroom because I've yet to receive that love that I was able to receive in this uh, high school class. So I want Mr. Romero to come up and um, be by me because um, Mr. Romero's not only my high school teacher, but he's more as a, a friend, mentor, coworker. He was my old boss and I want to acknowledge him just like how he's acknowledged me. He's a second father figure. And if it, I remember that class was the first time I had a teacher say, what do you think? Before that, it was handouts, hurry, go, get out of my classroom. He would always say, come back after class. Come back when school gets out. And I'm hoping that you all could stay for the whole event, listen to all the guest speakers, listen to his story. We're unfortunately gonna have to leave because we have to go back to the Pico Youth and Family Center. And that is an interesting uh, tie because I'm hoping to one day return back to Tucson and start up a youth center so the youth back in Tucson could have and feel safe to listen to Chicano studies and the curriculum because right now it, it's, it's not a safe environment. It's very hostile. And that's one reason why I'm decided to uh, stay in Tucson. So Mr. Romero was actually the first person to say UCLA <laughs> in the, my vocabulary. He said, mijita, and it was actually Danny. <laughs> you should take classes with my good friend, Danny Solorzano. And I said, you know, I wanna study urban planning, but um, he's the one that said go to UCLA, and he's the first person that I called to let, to let him know that I got accepted into UCLA when I reapplied to the master's program. So when I graduated in June, and I wanna let him know this because I care for him so much, he couldn't come out here and I know he was disappointed for my graduation because he was fighting those battles, seriously battles, not just battles on papers, but battles out in the, in the crowd, people um, giving him some real racism, real racist attacks, verbal, you know, abusive. He couldn't be here at my graduation and I know he felt bad but to me, him standing here next to me means way more than him being able to come and watch me walk down and receive my diploma because he's here fighting for, the, for my future generation, my little cousins, his kids. Hopefully one day I'll be blessed with kids to take these classes and be here sitting in the audience listening, uh, not to how to say ethnic studies, but teachings of teaching, you know, Chicano Raza studies, ethnic studies. So please, please support um, no SB ten, no SB ten seventy, and no HB two two eight one. If you're unfamiliar, hopefully today you'll hear you'll hear about it. But I encourage you all to uh, take a stand in what you're passionate about. And he always told me, you know, think critically, think outside the box, not just criti critically, but think compassionately. Not to think like him, but just to think. So that means a lot. And um, please take the time to to do your research and and help save that department because we need to keep these classes going because if it goes down in Arizona, you know what, it's gonna go down here in California and it's gonna affect LA, it's gonna affect the high schools. Imagine taking a high school class and having a professor, a teacher care for you. You would all be receiving, you know, the encouragement to get your master's. I know I wouldn't have been able to finish my master's if it wasn't for mentors and femtors like Agustin Romero and the Ethnic Studies, Raza Studies program out in Tucson. So I encourage all of you to um, support. To me, it's, it's so much. Because in school, we, our spirit is killed. And this class, this curriculum saves. You know, not just mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. This class saved my life. So please um, take a look at the website. And thank you. Please give Agustin Romero a round of applause. And thank you all for coming here, taking the time. And if you need my contact information, or if you want to come, check us out at the Pico Youth and Family Center. Right now, I'm, I can't be in Tucson, but the teachings that he taught me, I'm hoping to spread the seeds of knowledge out in, at the center. So thank you again.
Thanks, Lena. And thanks, Augustine.